and elsewhere in South America to dye clothing and whatever. And then when, at a certain point in colonial times, it was uh, exported back to Europe, and in Italy, that, well, this is the color that um, the cardinal robes in, you know, in the Catholic Church was dyed in. Later, the fashion has changed a little and the hues are different. Uh, but this was actually the original color that informed or, or uh, yeah, these uh, robes were made in. And that's one of the other things that Jan Ho is very interested in. He's brought up as a Catholic himself, growing up, at least with being a baby or a young kid in, in Vietnam, that um, his family converted into uh, Catholicism. So this whole idea of exchange is then at play again. Yeah. Uh, this sculpture is also made, well, only last month, to tell you the truth. It's a wooden Madonna, uh, apparently from, or legibly from the Pisano school, um, as you might be able to see. It's a Madonna, uh, or it's an Annunciation piece in the moment where she's actually, well, becoming pregnant. And it's placed on top of a Roman, and this, I, I just can't say this, sarcophagus? Sarcophag you can say it too. <laughs> sarcophagus, a uh, Roman, uh, you know, I, I think it's made of limestone, but you actually have this coffin and you put the body in and it dissolves uh, because of this certain stone. And Jan Wall was very interested in this. I mean, maybe a little bit the lion is referring to Venice as well, but, but this whole constellation of uh, the Virgin Mary uh, becoming the mother of Christ or being impregnated with uh, him and then have this lion uh, apparently eating uh, the human body uh, in the end. Uh, the, red, the red color uh, has been used, or this certain red pigments have been used uh, to dye this fabric. It's not painted walls, it's actually a silk fabric that was produced in a, in a, in a very traditional family run fabric factory in uh, uh, Florence, or in Firenze in Florence. And then it was uh, put on the walls by a local Venetian uh, tapestry company who, yeah, who you know, had this really certain technique. You put it up, it hangs for some hours or days, and then you can restretch it. Um, From which century is the Madonna? Um, uh, 14th century. But all these details of, of the materials are very, 
uh, detail described in the small booklet that you got in your press kit. So you can go back and see datings and you can see uh, what the materials actually are. Would you care to comment on how you find the right balance between um, between being clever and being honest and and pain and in pain? Yeah, I, uh, that was a good question. But I think um, um, I think I have a, a very simple strategy. I don't think that create an exhibition that that should be there should be a balance in an exhibition so you don't have like a, a how can I explain it I think really good exhibition is an exhibition that escapes from confinement and I think that's the strategy of finding balance balance between whatever people call personal histories or uh, any histories Materials, colors, um, it's it's an attempt to escape all these confinements. Did that answer your question? <laughs> a bit, and is that why you now go, to, why you went to Mexico? Mm -hmm. A kind of, yeah. That was the biggest escape I did. The reason I chose like uh, titles from The Exorcist uh, is, um, I mean, it's very particular. So it's only the, what the demon says in the film, and uh, what interested me was the double function of the film. In one hand, it's one of the most horrific films produced, and the other hand, it's also Hollywood. So it has like multiple uh, potential. And uh, what interested me about the demon talk is the possibility of speaking in multiple uh, languages. And I never use titles as giving directions. I think it's like more to open meanings and possi possibilities. I think uh, my use, especially for this exhibition, was dragging into to time like from Roman to Christians to discovery of Americans. And I wanted to add in something that was very now. And I thought the exorcist was perfect. You know, like I think I thought it was a very intelligent choice from the committee to pick up a person like me to do a national pavilion because National representation is one thing, but culture is another. Culture is not native. Culture is cross-pollination, cross-contamination. And that's the opposite, and that's a brilliant combination, I think. Because that's the first contradiction to create, a, a, to have a good context to create your work in. That's one thing. The other is, you know, I've had, of course, multiple questions about my personal history, but I will reversely say, if I work with the Latin alphabet and the transformation of it, the mutation of it, I think it's very little about, about my personal history. I think on the other hand, maybe the tiles here from Gorda Church, cathedral, that was transmitted, transformed into a cathedral from a mosque, I think that's maybe more, more, some of the most personal thing I do at the moment because personal history is never static. You were never the same 10 years ago 
as you are today. You know? So if you talk about personal histories, that's like just this moving mass. Do you like? Could you tell us a little about your experience of Venice? I mean, you, you've got lions, you've got cardinal red walls, you've got um, uh, Danish furniture that looks like Carlo Scarpa. It's it's very very Venetian, it, even even tiled floors. It's very very Venetian in feel. How much has the city um, determined your installation here? Um, I've been privileged to spend a lot of time in Venice, but before that, I was also. Uh, starting to research into the history of Andalusia, the definition of Europe as we understand it today as a, as a landmass. But when I talk about culture as not being native, then Venice and Andalusia is like wonderful ex you know, examples of places where when seafair was much more important, the cross-pollination between cultures was in the Mediterranean. And you know, that was a privilege for me to be in these places, to understand these histories much better. And of course, the declination from Venice to the discovery of America is totally interlinked. And that's just like, um, I think, you know, these questions was more, much more interesting for me to deal with rather than Denmark. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jan. Uh, and why did you choose these religious symbols? Uh... Because that's the foundation for cultural production, right? As we understand it. And I'm, you know, like, it was a part, big part of my history. And they did like some of the most amazing images. <laughs> And uh, it's more important to work about uh, art or uh, to thinking about art? What it's I your, think it's a combination. You have to think and you create and you... It's, um, it's back and forth all the time. No? In first you choose the piece. Yeah, no, we had like 20 pieces here. 20 and then you piece. find out which one is good together, how much there should be, how much you take out. So we had a big shipment back. That was like to walk around in the space and find the right balance. It's casual or uh, yeah, it is. It uh, is. Reflex, uh, yeah, it's both. But you have to be there in order to be able to do that. You visit. Um, what, yeah. what you visit? Yeah, I all. visit a lot of things around. There's a lot of treasures. People that goes around here should go around and see other things. Yes, yes. They should yes. go to Padua, Verona. What do you prefer, modern art or labyrinth art? No, it's uh, some. It depends if it's good or not. Then it doesn't matter if it's time, right?